Hey everybody, this is uh, Jim Kurtz with Harvest Harmonics and I uh, want to welcome you again to uh, our successful farmer show where we highlight uh, some of the successful farmers in the industry and people that are, are having a lot of success and wins, especially with our Kimunasi plant booster technology. And today it's my extreme pleasure to welcome uh, Jim Reed with KR Citrus, uh, who was one of our uh, earliest users in the beginning here. Jim, thank you so much for joining us here. Well, thank you. And uh, glad, glad to be uh, in communication with you. Glad to be able to be on your show. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, Jim, so uh just want to give people a little bit of an idea you know your background obviously um you know so first of all i guess how long have you been farming you've been you've been at it a while i think well i got out of college in 1966 and i've been making my living farming ever since then however i did a few years ahead of that uh start working for my father in the summers and so on and so forth and uh so basically, been involved since 1958, which is quite a while. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's a, that's a long career, and that's that's great. So, um, have you always been farming citrus? I know you have citrus uh, citrus groves now, and you're, you have a nursery, which we'll get to. But have you always kind of focused on citrus, or have you grown other crops also? Well, I have for the last 50 years uh, mm -hmm. focused on citrus. I've been making a living farming for 55 years. The first uh, few years out of college, uh, I did run a fairly large row crop uh, ranch, and we did uh, potatoes, and we did uh, cantaloupes, we did carrots, cotton, uh, all the grains, and you, you name it. And then there, had, and over the years, I've been involved in farming operations where we've done grapes and nuts. And, Done every nut except pistachios. I don't know how I missed that, but almonds and and uh, uh, walnuts, uh, prunes, uh, uh, plums. Uh, but citrus has been my primary, my primary thing. Is there something specific about citrus that's, um, you know, either better or you like better about other crops, or does that just happen to be like what what you were growing and what you kind of stuck with? Well, I I call citrus a unique staple uh, because you have everybody has it everybody everybody believes they need it for the vitamin c which is true mm -hmm. and the, if you look just look at the numbers and yeah we have freezes that have kind of uh, skew the numbers once in a while both uh on the farm and in the bank account uh, but over the past few years there's been a we've been able to mitigate those losses with insurance programs that we pay for mm -hmm. that it kind of make it a little more stable i don't know i just I got into it. Uh, started. I started in, in citrus, not count when I was thirteen, but after when I was making a living at it, uh, I was a field man for a small sun-kissed packing house, and they had a freeze, and they needed somebody to get volume, and I was able to uh, triple their volume in short order, build that to three packing houses, and then I went on into owning and running packing houses of my own, and got into juice plants. I just got entrenched in the citrus deal. And I started mm -hmm. developing citrus. Yeah. So uh, that's just, it, it just happened that way. So once you kind of get get going with something, it's it becomes easier just to kind of keep going with that same crop as opposed to try to diversify and try other things and that kind of stuff. Well, I became, Some degree. I became vertically integrated, Jim. Oh. Uh, we, we had ownership in juice plants, in packing houses, and the farms themselves. So okay. it just, you, you just got into a cycle and there was just, no reason to get out. Occasionally, we would take on another project uh, with uh, wine grapes or fresh grapes, whatever. We, our farming company would take that on occasionally. So our our uh, staple has been citrus, pretty much. Awesome. And just uh, just so you guys are watching, I just want to again welcome you to the the successful farmer episode. And guys, if you're watching this, please don't hesitate. Like, ask your questions, uh, leave your comments here. We do read them. We we will ask uh, Jim here, our guest. Uh, if you have questions, please leave them in the comments so that we can uh, ask them and interact. We want to make this an interactive show also. So feel free, of course, to type them in in the comments as we go along here. Now, um, now again, Jim, what, what kind of uh, challenges are you facing right now? I mean, it's kind of an interesting year. I've been talking to farmers all over California. And, you know, drought seems to be a big issue, and there's some other issues. What, what challenges are you facing right now in terms of the citrus this year? 
We have had unprecedented heat and we've had our water cut 30%. And those two don't really make for a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've been able to buy emergency water at double the cost or more of our regular water. And of course, we're using every method that we can to conserve water. Uh, so that, that's kind of our challenge. We also had in the citrus, uh, and I really don't know why we have our main, one of our major, we have two major pests in citrus, thrips, mm -hmm. and kales. And the thrip, we already spray for in the spring when the citrus just comes out of bloom and it's the size of a BB or a little bigger. And that usually takes care of it for, yeah, maybe you have to spray again. Well, we, we had to turn right around and respray again. Whether it was weather related, I'm not sure. But we couldn't we, we couldn't uh, get the spray rig back in the field fast enough mm -hmm. uh, on our on our organic uh, production. It becomes even more uh, challenging because it's about four or five times the amount of money to spray for organic to, to control thrift than it is to do it with you know, on, on your conventional on conventional thrift. So that's kind of been a, those, those two things have been quite, have been a pretty good challenge. And of course, with extreme heat. Right after the bloom, then you also have what we call June drop. We got June drop in May because we had 106, 108, 111 temperatures in May and June, and so I think we're probably going to have a pretty light crop uh, next next season. But the light crops really don't scare me a lot because we tend to make up the the with we get a little better price. It's the law demand, supply and demand. And then you don't pay as much for picking because you don't have as much to pick. And mm -hmm. you don't pay as much in, in different services. But per acre returns have been as good or better in light crop years than heavy crop years. Okay. Very cool. Now, um, I kind of want to go back a couple years ago. What, what made you, you know, a couple years ago, you, you decided to try our Cuminosity plant booster. Um, I believe you tried it on one of your 30 acre groves and then I think your, one of your greenhouses. What, what made you decide to, to sort of try uh, this product and this technology out? You know, I have always been looking for new and better ways. Not so much new, but better ways to farm. Mm -hmm. I've tried all kinds of things that come along, and I've gotten burned a few times, but I've also had some successes as well. And I read the literature that, that was available and the uh, what was on your website and did the research on the doctor. Uh, and so on and so forth. And then I asked you I, for some uh, references before I before I tried it. Mm -hmm. And you gave me one fellow in the Northwest. I talked to him, sorry, I can't remember his name, he probably did. And we got along great. He grew melons, he grew some tree fruit. And his last, his parting comment to me was, I wouldn't farm anything without it. So I thought, <laughs> well, he seemed quite sincere. Uh, so I thought I would try it. I just planted 30 acres of of young citrus uh, not far from here and uh, so I, I, I got a device from you and I bought that one and I told you about the one we had dragon fruit growing in different mm -hmm. different rooms in our greenhouse which was an old citrus packing house we converted over right and it had multiple areas and multiple supplies of water not just one big one like on a farm we got one supply as a rule yeah. so I, you, you gave me a device to try Right. And we watched that, and we had another room right next to it, about full sun size, or about five, six thousand square foot rooms, and uh, we were able to water both those rooms. And then we have other ones that we didn't try it on, and then they, they just rooted. Uh, they normally takes twenty one to uh, four to four weeks, four 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 weeks, twenty one to thirty days to root. We we're rooting them in fourteen to twenty, fourteen, sixteen days, and the growth mm -hmm. was faster. I got new growth faster. On, we tried it two or three times. We just wasn't one. Just wasn't one planting, one and done. It was yeah. a few plantings from different growers, and then I decided that I would I would do that. And uh, on the citrus, my goodness, uh, uh, a neighbor of mine planted a year ahead of me, and by after three months, my trees were as big as his or bigger. I think I sent you a video showing you that. Yeah, and man, we saw. It, it's still it's still true to this day that growth is. As a matter of fact, I think I just sold the growth about an hour or so ago. I wasn't even oh, yeah. trying to paper. I don't know what you're doing, but I got to have that growth. So, <laughs> well, you should give him my number. I'll, I'll give him the, the plant yeah. booster so he can have it on his other field, too. <laughs> I will absolutely tell him about that. He has pistachios right around there. So I don't, he won't be a hard sell. Uh, he's yeah. a real nice. And 
that. So I'll uh, I'll be sure to tell you about that. So that's you think why I did it. Awesome. Well, do you, do you think that those citrus seedlings? Do you think that they're going to end up being uh, being able to produce a crop faster based upon the growth rate, or is that that just no really determined on those things? No question. No question. Yeah. In my mind. Yeah. So I, I and then I put it on the hundred acre organic growth that we have, and I will say that the uh, organic growth, you drive by and you can see oh there's weeds that they're light color they're necrotic, you can kind of tell they're, they're organic growth. Mm -hmm. uh, Mine doesn't look like that. My organic growth looks uh, very similar to the conventional growth right next to it. Uh, other than I have a few weeds, and I'm working, yeah. on, I'm working on that. Uh, so, uh, no, I'm I'm very pleased with the uh, uh, with the uh, setup. Yeah, no, we're and we're really pleased. We've ob obviously you've helped us. Uh, you know, like like you mentioned, you talked to a farmer that that used it, and I know we referred people to you as hey, you know, talk to Jim, talk to Art, talk to some of these guys that have used it because at the end of the day, we're Obviously, we're promoting a product, and we know what it does. But sometimes it's best for somebody that doesn't have a, a vested interest necessarily to hear it from from the horse's mouth, so to speak, of you know you know what their experiences were. So we we really appreciate the help that you've given us over the last couple of years. Well, the, the thing about your system, uh, it is it it is a fair amount of upfront cost, but you've been uh, flexible and able to help farmers mitigate in the cash flow. And I think that you're creative, and I think you're getting more creative in that area all the time of how uh, uh, we can afford to pay for it as we go along. And mm -hmm. I, think that, uh, I think that will help a lot. Right. Now, you mentioned a couple of minutes ago that your organic groves were, uh, were looking more like conventional groves. Like, what exactly do you mean by that? What are the changes you've seen there? Well, an organic grove, you're always trying to put on your main, your main enemy, you can't get enough nitrogen. Mm -hmm. And don't the, uh, the so the trees the leaves are smaller the well, trees are yellow they're just not not as healthy and the uh, uh, with with the Kamasi system we are seeing that our I, I'm just going to assume we put a lot of inputs in it so I'm going to assume that the system allows the inputs to go to work and use more efficiently to use more of what we're of what we're putting in would be mm -hmm. would be my guess my Brother farms, uh, well, not quite a thousand acres of citrus, same area, mm -hmm. and we have we have the uh, he, he farms for, for another for for another existing farm. He's our farm manager, but he calls all the shots on their citrus, and he farms some of the stuff that I planted years ago for other investors, and I can see on the organic that uh, my trees just look better, and I have better. I just looked at a whole lot of them uh, the day before yesterday. I'm going, wow. I mean, wow. With the with the shortages we've had to endure with water and the heat, uh, I was much more pleased than I'd ever been. I drove through some of the stuff that he's planting and he or he farming, excuse me. And he you have the same inputs, but the trees are just so much better uh, with with the with the system. I just uh, uh, as I said, I I I'm afraid to farm without it now. <laughs> Well, that's good. Hopefully, you won't ever have to. Um, I wanted to uh, ask you some questions about the dragon fruit. You kind of mentioned them a little earlier. So, the dragon fruit. For those of you guys who don't know, dragon fruit is kind of like a cactus-style plant. Um, suck, is it a succulent or a cactus? I'm I'm not sure which. The cactus. Yeah. So, um, you know, you're you're growing them. You're buying them as, as small seedlings. I think what you said, four to six inches long, basically, like small uh, shoots. They're, they're cuttings and uh, cuttings, yeah. More, more like twelve to twelve inches up. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a very prolific plant, and so when the growers prune, I I'll get some that are forty-five inches, fifty inches long from time to time, and mm -hmm. that's fine. It, it, it's fine. But they're they're a, they're a cab, very aggressive cactus. Okay. So and and you're growing them. You're you're buying the the cuttings and then you're growing them up to full size and then you're selling them to like retail gardening chains, correct? I sell them to a box store, okay. and we haven't. Uh, we just got approached by uh, a wholesale nursery chain that has several stores to to supply them. We're just now getting to the point where we're we're able to keep up with the box store that we have uh, their demand. And it, it took a while. We've only been doing it for a little over a year. We started that started it in late November of 2019, so we just had one full season, 
and we didn't know what we were doing at all. And we couldn't find anybody that's growing more than a thousand plants, and we have a hundred thousand. So you have to, mm. little economies of scale are, are a little different. But uh, we made some mistakes, but we're we're certainly uh, improving on uh, on how we grow them and the health of them and so on and so forth. So yeah. Continuing. Yeah, and when you were showing us the pictures of the side by sides, you mentioned you did some control and some you know, several different experiments along the way, and you, you were showing us some of the side by side pictures, and I'm like, you know, the, wow, it's <laughs> like wow, yeah. you know, in 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 five weeks they were like literally double the size. I'm like, geez, right. you know. Yeah, they grow well when they when they come out with a different shoot. You got to stock, and then as it grows, it grows a different shoot on top of that. And yeah. the without the treatment, they grow a little piece of spaghetti, and mm -hmm. in let's say in Six weeks after we after we after we plant them, and with the treatment, they grow out like a big old uh, uh, this, 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 the size of a nice like a maple leaf size, uh, much much larger size, fat mm -hmm. much larger around and, and taller and stronger, and just the plant just looks a lot better. It grows it grows better. So yeah. every everything we do here and now is under the with the system. Yeah, and, and I was noticing that it's not just that they're taller or even that the, the, the trunks are thicker, which obviously is important because if they're real thin, they're going to fall apart. But I also noticed that the, the pictures of the Kiminasi were real green. They were like a bright green as opposed to sort of a dull, more of a duller green on the on the ones that didn't have the tech back then. That's correct. They, they have a darker, richer green color. That's correct. Yeah, and, you, and you're also growing now. You, you started growing coffee plants, correct? We just started growing coffee plants, yeah, for the same box store and we have we're going to deliver in a week or two a uh, test plot we started with a few and uh, I, I can't tell you there's any difference with or without the treatment because i wouldn't take a chance i just put them on with, with the box <laughs> so i don't i don't have a test to show you or tell you about that's that's fine you know it's it's totally fine i mean you know i can't I Uh, you know, what advice would you give other growers that, that might be looking at this or considering it or, or, you know, not sure because maybe it's a new, you know, it's, it's a new company, new technology. What what kind of advice could you give them as far as, um, you know, what you've seen with this technology and, uh, and how it's helped you and your farm? Well, you know, farmers, I think we must all be from Missouri because we all want to be shown. You know, you got to show <laughs> So, uh, yeah. and I was, my family's from Iowa right next door, so it spilled over, I guess. And so that's exactly, I didn't just go out and say, okay, gee, this is the greatest thing since sliced bread. I believe every report I read, and I'm going to take and do whatever it takes to get that on my crop in ASAP. I didn't do that. I explained the history of it. We tried it on the, uh, uh, the smallest grove that we have, and that was the least expensive entry fee for me. And yeah. then we tried it on the dragon fruit. And that wasn't a whole lot. Well, yes, you gave me that one, so that made that made that experiment pretty, pretty. Uh, the entry fee was pretty cheap there, and then uh, we were able to see what it was. So then uh, uh, we went ahead and put it on everything. So just give it a try. Just give it, give it a try. Uh, every farm is a little different. I had a guy call me from uh, the East Coast, and he did greenhouses with tomatoes. And I asked him, "Do you have separate watering systems for your different greenhouses?" Yeah. I said, "We well, got a three-quarter inch pipe or a one-inch pipe." Said, yeah. So we'll just try one on one of those and then you can see just, just do side by side and uh you know, within uh 90 days 120 days max you're gonna see if it works for you or not uh right. so just try yeah and, and we guarantee it um we're not giving so many freebies out anymore but we're guaranteeing it anyway i mean you know we always our, our motto has always been like no farmer is ever going to lose money with us you know when we when i got into this business the way, the way uh, Frank, our CEO, got me involved with this is he said, look, you know, we're here to help farmers doing whatever we can do. And uh, we're not going to, you know, if, if for some reason our product doesn't work, you know, and and the, it's despite all the, the good intentions and efforts otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll give you your money back because at the end of the day, you know, both of my grandparents were farmers and, and uh, you know, they're the backbone of this country, you know, so they they feed everybody, you know, Every man, woman, and child. So we, we better do something to help farmers. That was that was our mission here. So, well, that's our job. Our job is to feed the world. Yeah, 
and uh, and you're doing a great job. I really appreciate um, everything you've done so far, everything you're you're doing, not just with us, but obviously just in terms of, of helping people. And uh, I did want to mention this. I don't want to embarrass you, but I did want to mention this, guys. Uh, Jim has, has, you know, and several of the times that I've you know called him to follow up on various things. You know, Jim has mentioned that, you know, he's helping a neighbor, he's helping a friend, you know. Uh, helping, helping a buddy. You know, there was a bunch of wildfires last year. I remember uh, a couple of times when I called you, you said, no, I'm, I'm helping a guy who just lost his house. And you know, you're, you're very much a humanitarian and, and an all around good guy. And, and I just wanted to, to thank you for not just farming and, and helping us, but everything you do to help everybody because, you know, guys like you are, are very special and uh, you definitely deserve to be praised for that. Well, I, I, I don't deserve any praise. The Lord deserves all the praise. And the glory is all, is all his. And uh, if you just help other people, uh, I don't do it because of the rewards I get. But you, you help other people, you get it back in spades. Uh, mm -hmm. So I love helping people. You're, you're right. I do love helping people. And I'm blessed so much for doing that. But I, I get blessed by doing it myself. Not for doing it, but I get blessed because I, it, it gives me such a good feeling. Yeah, and, and, and the same way, like every time somebody, you know, like like yourself or somebody gives me a testimonial or gives me a success story. He says, "Hey, I've uh, I've I've seen all these different results that I didn't think were possible. You know that that that's my validation for you know for helping. That that lets me know that I'm helping others and helping farmers and and obviously ultimately helping others too. So, um, you know, Jim, I, I really appreciate having you on the show today. I mean, thank you so much for for everything you're doing. And um, guys, if you if you want to see some successes like like Jim's having, please give us a call." Uh, we're here to help as much as we can. And um, Jim, thank you so much for being on our show today. We really enjoyed having you. And um, any last words for, for our viewers out there? Uh, just keep keep the chin up, keep farming, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll all prevail. And thank you. Awesome. That's cool. Thank you so much, Jim. Appreciate it. And thanks a lot, guys. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow to our special webinar, How We're Using Biophysics to Change Agriculture Around the World. And also on uh, on Friday with our Ask an Expert special, where we have an industry expert to show you how you can improve various areas of your farm. So don't don't forget to stay tuned for that. Jim, thank you so much again, and we will see you guys soon. Take care now. Thank you.